Sutra. Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. As he dwells in this purity, his mind is tranquil and at ease. Suddenly, a feeling of boundless joy wells up in him. There is such bliss in his mind that he cannot contain it. Commentary. Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. As he dwells in this purity of samadhi, his mind is tranquil and at ease. His mind is exceptionally calm and settled without any scattered thoughts. Right at that point, the feeling skanda produces another effect in him. Suddenly, a feeling of boundless joy wells up in him. He feels a happiness that knows no bounds. There is such an extreme bliss in his mind that its extent cannot be known, and he cannot contain it. Even if he wants to stop the joy, he cannot. Sutra. This is called experiencing lightness and ease, but lacking the wisdom to control it. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. Commentary. This is called experiencing lightness and ease, but lacking the wisdom to control it. He does not have the wisdom to control his own happiness. If he understands, then there is no error. If you realize what it is, then there is no problem. This experience does not indicate sagehood. This does not mean that you have become a sage. Sutra. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon that lacks happiness. We will enter his mind. As soon as he sees someone, he will laugh. He will sing and dance in the streets. He will say that he has already attained unobstructed liberation. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Commentary. But if he considers himself a sage, if you say, "Oh, now I've entered the ground of happiness. I'm a bodhisattva of the ground of happiness." Then a demon that lacks happiness will enter his mind. As soon as he sees someone, he will laugh uproariously. He will sing and dance in the streets like a hippie. He gets totally carried away, waving his arms and stamping his feet, singing and dancing, making all kinds of music. He will say that he has already attained an abstracted liberation. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. He loses his proper concentration, his proper knowledge and views, and his powers of reasoning, and eventually he will fall into the house. Sutra. Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. He says he is already satisfied. Suddenly, a feeling of unreasonable. Intense self-satisfaction may arise in him. It may include pride, outrageous pride, haughty pride, overweening pride, and pride based on inferiority, all of which occur at once. In his mind, he even looks down on the tathagatas of the ten directions, how much the more so on the lesser positions of sound hearers and those enlightened by conditions. Commentary. Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. He says he is already satisfied. He feels he already has enough of everything. He's already realized the fruition, become enlightened, and become a Buddha. Suddenly, a feeling of unreasonable, intense self satisfaction may arise in him. Self-satisfaction is a form of haughtiness. He respects no one. He looks down on everyone and thinks no one is as good as he is. It may include a bright arrogance, outrageous, outrageous bright, which is extreme arrogance. Haughty bright, there's no greater arrogance than this. Overweening bright, bright added to bright. And bright based on inferiority, feeling that everyone is inferior to him, and looking down on everyone. These are different kinds of bright. 
all of which occur at once. In his mind, he even looks down on the Tathagatas of the Ten Directions. To what extent does his pride go? Not only is he arrogant toward pupil, he is arrogant toward the Buddhas. So he regards even the Tathagatas of the Ten Directions with contempt, feeling that they are not as good as he is. How serious would you say this pride is? It's really difficult to deal with. How much the more so on the lesser positions of sound hearers and those enlightened by conditions. He looks down on them even more. His attitude is, you're nothing but an ahata of the small vehicle. What's so special about you? He thinks he's higher than the Buddha, but he hasn't come up with another name yet. Sutra This is called viewing oneself as a supreme but lacking the wisdom to save oneself. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. Commentary This is called viewing oneself as a supreme. It is an occasional state that occurs in the feelings skanda, but it involves lacking the wisdom to save oneself. The person doesn't have the wisdom to save himself. If he understands, then there is no error. If he understands that this is an error, then the demon will not have his way with him, as it is said. If you understand, then you won't be confused. But when you are confused, you lack understanding. If you understand, it is like taking a sword of wisdom and hacking through the confusion. This experience does not indicate sagehood. It does not mean you have realized sagehood. Sutra But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of intense arrogance will enter his mind. He will not bow to stupas or in temples. He will destroy sutras and images. He will say to the Dhanapatis, These are gold, bronze, clay, or wood. The sutras are just leaves or cloth. The flesh body is what is real and eternal, but you don't reveal it. Instead, you venerate clay and wood. That is totally absurd. Those who have deep faith in him will follow him to destroy the images or bury him, bury them. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless house. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Commentary But if he considers himself a sage, if you say that this is a good state, then a demon of intense arrogance, an extremely haughty demon, will enter his mind and possess him. He will not bow to stupas or in temples. He will not bow to Buddhas or stupas when he sees them. Nor will he make obeisance when he goes into temples. He will destroy sutras and images. He will burn sutras and break images of the Buddhas. Destroying sutras and images are offenses that lead to the house. But he will say, these things are all false. He will say to the Dhanapatis, he has his own disciples and he tells his disciples these things. Dana means giving and party means to transcend. So in Buddhism, one who makes offerings to the Triple Jewel is called a Dhanapati. He says to his own Dhanapatis and followers, These are gold, bronze, clay or wood. The sutras are just leaves or cloth. Buddha images are made of gold or of bronze or they may be constructed of clay or wood. Sutras are written out on leaves or on silk or cotton cloth. What's the use of worshipping them? They have no consciousness. The flesh body is what is real and eternal. This flesh body of mine is real, but you don't reveal it. You don't reveal me. Instead, you venerate clay and wood. You'd rather bow to idols of clay and wood. That's the use of what's the use of that? It would be better for you to bow to me than to them. That is totally absurd. What awareness do these pieces of wood have? It's ridiculous for you to bow to them. Those followers who have deep faith in him, who deeply believe in him, will follow him to destroy the Buddha images and burn the sutras or to bury them in the ground. 
through such behavior, he will mislead living beings so that they will not believe in Buddhism, but will have doubts instead. He will hinder them like that, and they will definitely fall into the relentless house. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Sutra, further in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In his refined understanding, he awakens completely to subtle principles. Everything is in accord with his wishes. He may suddenly experience a limit this likeness and ease in his mind. He may say that he has become a sage and attained great self-mastery. This is called attaining likeness and clarity due to wisdom. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. Commentary Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In his refined understanding, his understanding becomes even more refined than before. He awakens completely to subtle principles. At this time, he gains a thorough understanding of very fine and subtle principles. Everything is in accord with his wishes. He may suddenly experience a state of limitless lightness and ease in his mind. He may say that he has become a sage, a Buddha, and obtained great self-mastery, the greatest happiness and ease. This is called attaining lightness and clarity due to wisdom. Having uncovered a little wisdom, you obtain a state of lightness and purity, and that's all. It certainly does not count as an extraordinary state. If he understands, then there is no error, no problem. This experience does not indicate sagehood. You should not think this state is the realization of sagehood, for it is not. Sutra, but if he considers himself a sage, then a demon that lies lightness and clarity will enter his mind, claiming that he is already satisfied. He will not strive to make further progress. For the most part, we as such cultivators will become like the unlearned bhikshu. He will mislead living beings so that they will fall into the, the avashi hell. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Commentary, but if he considers himself a sage, if upon having this state of light is, he thinks he has already been certified to the fruition of sagehood, then a demon that lies like need, like lightness and clarity will enter his mind. This demon, who also experiences the state of light is and sublime clarity, will possess the person, claiming that he is already satisfied, that he has perfected everything. He will not strive to make further progress. Above, there is no Buddhahood to accomplish, and below, there are no living beings to save. He does not need to become a Buddha, for he has already become one. Nor does he need to save living beings, for he has already finished saving them. He has already accomplished the Buddhahood he was supposed to accomplish, and he has saved the living beings he was meant to save. Therefore, he does not seek further progress. For the most part, such cultivators will become like the unlearned bhikshu mentioned earlier. Lacking wisdom, he thought the fourth dhyana was a fourth fruition of a hardship. He will mislead living beings so they don't know the proper path and do not recognize the Buddha Dharma. He confuses and hinders living beings so that they will fall into the Avashi hell. In the future, this sort of person will fall into the relentless house. Why? Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Since he has lost his proper samadhi, he is bound to fall into the relentless house. Sutra Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the, the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In that clear awakening, he experiences an illusory clarity. Within that, suddenly he may veer 
towards the view of eternal extinction, deny cause and effect, and take everything as empty. The thought of emptiness so predominates that he comes to believe that there is eternal extinction after death. This is called the mental state of samadhi dissolving, so that one loses sight of what is right. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. Commentary: Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. At that time. In that clear awakening, when he seems to understand but does not truly understand, he experiences an illusory clarity which is not real. Within that illusory clarity, suddenly a change occurs. What is it? He may veer towards the view of eternal extinction, deny cause and effect, and take everything as empty. He says, when a person dies, he is gone and dead forever. Therefore, to talk in terms of cause and effect is incorrect. There's no cause and effect. When people die, they no longer exist. So how could there be cause and effect? Everything is empty. Committing offenses is empty, and so is creating blessings. It is all empty. The thought of emptiness so predominates that he comes to believe that there is eternal extinction after death. The more he thinks, the more he feels he is right. All is empty. Once you die, it is all over. Everything is empty. At that point, he becomes convinced that people are gone forever after they die. The text reads, "If he understands, then there is no error. It is not indication, not an indication of sagehood. One sentence must have been left out of the text when it was originally copied. We can insert it here. This is called." The mental state of samadhi dissolving, so that one loses sight of what is right. At this point, his samadhi is gone, so he develops a thought of emptiness and loses his sense of what is right. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. This is not the state of realizing sagehood. Sutra, but if he considers himself a sage. Then a demon of emptiness will enter his mind. He will slander the holding of precepts, calling it a small vehicle dharma. He will say, "Since bodhisattvas have awakened to emptiness, what is there to hold or violate? This person, in the presence of his faithful dhanapatis, will often drink wine, eat meat, and engage in wanton lust." The power of the demon will keep his followers from doubting and denouncing him. After the ghost has possessed him for a long time, he may consume excrement and urine, or meat and wine, claiming that all such things are empty. He will break the Buddha's moral precepts and mislead people into committing offenses. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Commentary. But if he considers himself a sage, if he views this as satisfying to the fruition of sagehood, then a demon of emptiness will enter his mind. It will enter and possess his body. He will slander the holding of precepts, calling it a small vehicle dharma. He will say, "Don't observe the precepts. That's a dharma for the small vehicle." Great vehicle bodhisattvas do not have so many bothersome restrictions. You don't have to pay attention to them, as it is said. The great elephant does not travel along the rabbit's path. The great awakening is not confined by petty details. Once you are greatly enlightened, nothing matters anymore. Everything is empty. Wine and meat pass through the intestines. The Buddha dwells in the mind. So the Buddha, everything is made from the mind alone. The mind is just the Buddha, and the Buddha is just the mind. That's what he says. He even slanders the holding of precepts, saying only adherents of the small vehicle observe precepts. Followers of the great vehicle do not need this. Actually, the precepts for the great vehicle are even more explicit and even less should one violate them. 
He just phones is an uninformed pupil who have never studied the Buddha drama and do not understand any of the principles explained by the Buddha. That's why no matter what he says, they take it as an order to be followed, believing that what he says is right. Why do they believe him? Just because they have never heard the Buddha drama and don't even know what the Buddha drama is. He will say, since great Vihaka Bodhisattvas have already awakened to the emptiness of all dramas, what is there to hold or violate? How can there still be a holding of precepts or a violating of precepts? There's no such thing. This person who is possessed by the demon in the presence of his faithful Dhanapatis in the homes of Dharma protectors who believe in him will often drink wine, eat meat, and engage in wanton lust. The phrase engage in wanton lust is very important. Buddhism teaches people not to have lust and desire, yet his desire is excessive. He engages in defined practices of lust, yet people still believe in him because he has a demonic power. The power of the demon will keep his followers from doubting or denouncing him. They have tremendous faith in him. After the ghost has possessed him for a long time, he may consume excrement and urine or meat and wine, claiming that all such things are empty because he is possessed by a ghost. He will not think of excrement as something unclean and he will also casually drink urine. He will say that eating excrement and drinking urine are neither defined nor pure, using the phrase from the Heart Sutra. That's how he will distort the sutra's meaning. This demon will behave in a way which shows that he doesn't care whether something is clean or dirty. He will say that eating meat or and drinking wine are empty and that eating excrement and drinking urine are empty. In general, everything is empty. He will break the Buddha's moral precepts and mislead people into committing offenses. Then, lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. He deserves to fall into the house.